morning, everybody, everyone to the Spiritual Freedom Church of Hemet, California. And also, we all welcome you uh, watching in the via internet. We will welcome you here today, and I'm thankful, so thankful today that today we will rejoice because God has made this day to enjoy it. So uh, today, I am honored and blessed to speak about anger. And the reason why I'm so blessed is because the Lord has really touched my heart to, um, to rebuke it and to grow, to grow that it's not about anger. It's about the truth and the joy that we have in God's word. I'm going to start with, if everybody has a Bible, you can look um, up some scriptures. Okay, what is anger? Does anybody know? What is anger? It's an emotion. It's one of the, uh, the six strongholds. And the second one is anger. But see, anger has friends. Did you know that? Anger has the uh, followers of rage and murder. How many of you have uh, been raged? after you were so angry because someone rejected you or somebody offended you. That's a human response when you're angry. So what's the spiritual response to anger? It's forgiveness. So um, it, it, it will stop you for, from a calling of your destiny because if you, God cannot work with you if you have that emotion, that anger, that unforgiveness. It stops the intimacy with God. Also, anger is a feeling of sudden displeasure direct against the cause, often assumed wrong or injury. Do you feel any pain? Sometimes it's not the injury of the outer flesh. It could be in the emotion. Also, the affliction, trouble, dial of inflammation. Are you having any place in your body inflamed, swollen? You got to think about it. Why is it swollen? Did you hurt yourself? Or did somebody hurt you that caused inflation? I mean, inflammation in your body. Was anger there that made your pain be in your back, in your legs, in your arms, in your heart? Inflammation in your body brings pain. It stops the blood flow. So what does that tell us? The blood, you're stopping the blood of Jesus Christ to work in you. What kind of blood are you having? It's the bad blood. It's contaminated. So the inflammation can, can come within. Another thing in the medical dictionary, it says tissue reaction to injury. And it is, to get to the root of it, is caused by anger. In Genesis 4, 6, God asks, oh, tells um, Cain, why are you angry? Isn't God awesome to even not get angry at you because you're angry? But he asks you that question, why are you angry? The Lord asked him, why is your face? So dark with rage. So if you see yourself or you see somebody else out there, and if you don't see a smile or that joy, what do you think they have? They're troubled. They have anger. And I know that a lot of us have gone to the freeway 
well, some of these young people that don't, <laughs> that don't drive right now, but when you go in the freeway, sometimes people just do it just to be first. Like I'm driving in the freeway and I would think that they want to pass me to go either faster or there's something that they have to go somewhere really quick. But just to go in front of you, when there's traffic, when everybody's just, you know, not, or maybe if it was, it would be a courtesy, I'm sorry, it would be a courtesy if that person driving behind you would put his lights on and he's telling you, I want to go in front of you. Can you allow me? But no, instead of doing that, they they either honking at you hard or just passing you going really quick. No, there's something up. But if they don't deal with that anger because you're in front of them, they're going to have rage. And you know what rage is, right? What is rage? It's uncontrollable, uncontrollable emotions. So what do we do? If we don't control that emotion, that rage, what's going to happen? Murder. I had thoughts of murder. And I know a lot of you have to also, if you want to be honest with yourself. Also, in Genesis 4, 7, it says, it can be bright with joy if you will do what is, what if you would do what you should do. But if you refuse to obey, watch out. Sin is waiting to attack you, longing to destroy you, but you can conquer it. So I believe that God was really speaking to Cain to help him. I believe that God was telling him so he can recognize, what are you doing? What are you doing? So what happened here? The Lord saw right through him. The Lord told him everything he was feeling. In Genesis 4, 7, it can be a bright with joy if you will do what you should. The Lord was giving Cain instructions how to overcome the anger. But if you refuse to obey, watch out. Sin is waiting to attack you, longing to destroy you but you can conquer it. How can we conquer anger? How can we? By being obedient to God's word. God doesn't come and, 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 and is angry with you because you're angry. He says in his word, be angry, but sin not. He understands. How there is freedom when we obey God. How do we think Cain responded? Cain gave God an attitude. How, how many times we have attitudes? We can see it in their face. We can see it in their body. Their reaction. You know, when somebody pulls a fist, when you're talking, speaking to them, they pull a fist. Or they put a quiet ear. They don't want to listen to you because they have an attitude because they want to be right. Or they close their mind. They don't want to think about lovely things. They don't want to think. They want that emotion to, to really drive them to do what they want to do, the carnal flesh. It says attitude is... To be carnally minded is death. So if you're thinking about anger, anger is a sin. We will not go to heaven with sin in our hearts. We, we will not. God will not tolerate sin. And you better really think about it. If you're not doing what God wants you to do and renew your minds, be, cut off the old man and start anew. And God will bless you. 
But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you don't have life and you don't have peace, guess what? You're in the flesh. And in Romans 8, 6, it says, following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace, but following after the old nature, the old nature leads to death. In Romans 8, 7, it says, because of the old sinful nature within us is against God. It never... It never did obey God's law, and it never will. So you have to ask yourself a question. Why are you so angry every day? Or maybe are you in a roller coaster? One day you're angry, one day you're not. One day you're angry, one day you're not. I mean, what kind of lifestyle is that? You're going to get tired going on that same roller coaster. But are you going to be too tired to say, okay, God, I had enough. I want to do it your way. Why is it so hard? Why? Because our flesh needs to die. And it doesn't want to die. It wants to have control of you. That's why in uh, Romans 8.8 8 says, that's why those who are still under control of their old sinful self Bends on following their old evil desires can never please God. So if you're angry all the time, guess what? You're not pleasing God. You got to recognize that. We, we, we got to. There's, I was t talking to one of my brothers in Christ. And there are sins of omission. And omission and what other, Jaime? Commission. Sins that we do know is sin and we still do it. And the other one that we don't know. But that's, that's your responsibility to know those sins. If you don't pick up the word of God, you're not going to know nothing. You're going to be ignorant. But if you pick up the word of God, it's going to speak truth to you that you're going to hopefully that the spirit of the living God, that you won't reject the word of God telling you the truth. You know what? You need to change. You need to change your attitude. Don't come to my house and be angry and worship me. You're worshiping more the idol, which is anger and not God. There was, there was, um, many times, God had to deal with me many, many times because I had such an anger coming to this church. And it had nothing to do with the church. It had to do with my own personal life. And I was so angry at my daughter. We were coming to church, but I got so angry. I says, you're not going to church. I'm taking you back home. I was so angry that I just wanted to, you know, but I praise God because in that moment, in the heat of the moment, God said, no, turn around your car and you're going to church. And I struggled and I go, oh, and I'm being honest with you. So when I came to church, you know, we put on our best suit, best mind, praise the Lord. You know, you're coming all lovey-dovey. After you have an argument, after you're still angry, I'm lying. I'm deceiving you. I'm deceiving you coming into this church. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, how can you worship me in your anger? How can you? And he says, you need to repent. You need to ask for forgiveness. And my flesh was still struggling. He says, don't come here. I'm not going to listen to you. So I did the right thing. I went outside and I called my daughter and I asked her to forgive my behavior. It was wrong of me to do that. She forgave me and I just told her, let's worship. Let's worship God. Let's just worship him. 
and we did, there was breakthrough. Came into this church. I was at peace. I was loving everybody. You see, anger is going to take the joy away. But if you believe the word of God, it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you come in here with an attitude, you need to take that attitude out. Because I don't know about you, but I'm here to praise the Lord. Amen? After in uh, Genesis 4, 9, it says, no, I'm sorry, uh, 4, 8. One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the field. And while they were, th while they were together there, Cain attacked it and killed his brother. So who killed the brother? What kind of emotion was he going through? Anger. Anger. See, he didn't want to deal with his anger. So what happened? His other buddies came in. He got the rage. Because why? Because he got offended by God. He, God did not respect Cain's offering. And he was also jealous of his brother. It tells us a lot of things. Are we jealous with one another? Are you jealous because another sister is rising up? Are you jealous because um, somebody has a better job than you? Or somebody has more money than you? Are you jealous because of that? Instead of talking about them, we need to lift them up. Lift them up. Don't be careful with our words. Our words can what? Can give death. You can speak death or you can speak life. In Genesis 4, 9, it says, but afterwards the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? Here comes the attitude. How should I know? Cain reported. Am I supposed to keep track of him whoever, wherever he goes? What kind of attitude is that? We're supposed to take care of each other, right? Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Anger brings frustration. Is anybody here frustrated? Why do you come here to church? Why? What's the reasoning for you to come to church? Is it because you want to see your friends? Or because, hey, there's some good-looking chicks here? Why? Why do you come to church? What's in your heart? It says in Proverbs 12, 16, it is foolish to lose our temper when we are insulted. Has anybody insulted you? Or has anybody insulted you ever? Yes. We, we demonstrate maturity by using self-control. Are we using self-control now when we get angry? I am. And it works. I don't get to the point when I'm so like deep in anger that I want to kill. So God is good. He also says, and staying calm. By doing so, we should longingly, lovingly offer need, needed, um, we need to offer needed correction. Are, are you sometimes scared to give correction to somebody else that hurt you? Are you afraid? When somebody corrects you in love, are you afraid to say, you know what, I was wrong. Forgive me. Or, well, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. He's the one or she's the one. No, no. No, no. So it says, we can lovingly offer needed correction to the offender, provided a chance to build intimacy in the relationship and keep our hearts free from of resentment. That's also, also in all relationships, in friendships, in marriages, in any kind of relationship you have with someone. It needs to go beyond, beyond what you want. Look out for the other. 
Let's humble ourselves. Let's step back and promote the other one to go further to the kingdom of God. Sometimes we don't want to help other people. What is your motive in helping people? What is it? Is it anger? Oh, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. God's not going to accept that offering. Thank you, Father. Intimacy. Do we have intimacy in our friendship? Do we have intimacy in our, in our marriage? Think about that. Do you fight? Are you so angry because either your wife or your husband is not doing what you want them to do? Where's the growth? Is there sin in your marriage? Call it out. Come together. Communicate. When you, there's no communication, how are you going to know the other person is hurting? Sin has de devastated consequences. God loves us, but our uh, persistent disobedience sometimes causes him to turn away from us, allows other enemies to defeat us. That's God. That is so God. If we are wise, we will understand what has happened and admit, admit our sins and failures and confess, repent, and go forward and do not look back. Who in the Bible looked back? Yes. Lot's wife. She wanted to be in her comfort zone. She didn't want the newness of God. So God does not tolerate sin. He's not going to say, oh, it's okay, you can sin. It's all right. No. You sin, you sin. In Psalms 25, 3, 7, it says, when we place our faith in God, we can trust him to care for us and help us overcome the things in our life that would destroy us. We need to ask him to show us how to live according to the truth. Because of his great love and compassion, he will forgive our past. Tender-hearted, forgiving, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. In Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Never allow ourselves to become too hungry, too angry, too lonely, or too tired. We can help accomplish this Prompt, we can accomplish this promptly, dealing with our anger when it occurs. It says in Ephesians 4.26, be angry and not sin. What does that mean? It's okay to be angry? It says be angry. It, it's okay. It's okay. I really do believe it's okay. But he says what? He says, and do not, do not sin. So you have to know the difference. You have to know the difference. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. It says, bring, bring angry men, being angry men, win a moment. But it is not to be allowed to win a day. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 4, 30 to 32, do not be carnal minded. Let's go to Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Praise God. And this scripture really meant a lot to me last night when I was reading it. It says, it starts with 1. It says, 
not carnally, but Christ. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died, and you and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is, our life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Are you in glory right now? Not a false glory, a true glory. Remember Moses? He got angry. He didn't get mad at, he didn't get angry at God. He was disobedient because God asked him to what? To speak to the rock. Because he was angry at the people. So what happened? He striked it. He was angry. And it cost him to go to the promised land. So we need to really prepare our hearts and really come to peace with God and examine yourself. What sin? What have I done, Lord? What sin have I caused? Not only to myself, but to others. So I really do, from the bottom of my heart, start reading the word of God, and he will tell you. He has all the solutions in his word. Grasp it, grasp it, and purpose in your heart to be obedient. Many times God has saved me from the pit of hell. I'm alive today to be a witness to our Heavenly Father. No matter what, he still loves us. We will not be separated. But if you're going to be rebellious and don't care about anything, or you stop seeking God because you have issues, you have problems, and not trusting in him, you made that choice. God didn't make it for you. So really, really examine yourself. Don't be uh, blaming other people for your, for your mistakes, for your sin. Confess it and renew your mind and work for the Lord. Work for him in his holiness, in his righteousness. All that you do and say, do it for the Lord. Because the truly, the Christians are going to see the fruits. Who are you serving? Oh, He's not serving God because the way he speaks. Watch out about your tongue because God can cut it off. Don't speak death to other people. Let us not gossip about other people. God will deal with them. You just do the right thing. Put the armor of God, the full armor of God, how Mary has said, Put the full armor of God. And they're putting the full armor of God in the schools for our youth. But it's a choice on the youth if they want to follow that armor. They want to put it on. It's so easy to get the word of God. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord and everything. But when you go home, guess what? Put you on the shelf, God. I'm going to put you on the shelf. And you know what? Be careful because he might put you to the shelf too. He's going to say, I don't know you. So be careful. Just be careful. So bring on the new man. Take the old one off with his mercies and his kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But in all things, put on love. Love, which is, the, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, so which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in the richness, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms 
with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all the do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father.